Shalom, fellow soldiers in Jesus Christ throughout the earth. And those that don't know Jesus Christ, but are still savable, I hope this message reaches you. So, what made me make this video today? It's quite an interesting subject. Before we get into all the meat and potatoes, let me show you a few photos. So you see on the screen here, it says drug dealer home destroyed by tornado. The reason that I searched this and typed this in is because some tornadoes came through the area that I live at. <clears throat> and the first responders said that the police were saying that the tornado was going up and down, like jumping over people's houses and destroying all the drug dealers. And I found that really interesting. So I typed in, you know, typed in drug dealer home destroyed by tornado. And I found a couple different things. But what I found more interesting was I if you look at the screen, some of the articles are a little older. But I typed in church destroyed by tornadoes and all type of things are popping up. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Tornadoes, churches being destroyed by tornadoes and so-called Christian organizations. And let's see if we can see why they've been destroyed by a tornado. And let's also see what the scripture has to say about tornadoes and what the Bible calls whirlwinds. I pray you stay, stay through this whole video because this is going to shock you. This is going to really open your eyes to a whole nother subject of the Lord that I believe most are not talking about. And also the second half of this documentary is going to be called Drop Dead Pastors. And you're going to see legitimate footage of pastors dropping dead. And let's see if we can see why. And we want to start by saying, all glory to Jesus Christ. Whatever is done in this video that edifies the kingdom of Christ and is done in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, may you get all the glory. And may you use this to convict those, correct those that need it, edify those that need it, and also increase the fear of the Lord. Nahum chapter 1 verse 3, the Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all quit the wicked. For the Lord has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. The clouds are the dust of his feet. You ever heard the scripture? You know, I'm going to paraphrase it. If they don't receive you, shake the dust off your feet as a witness against them. As a witness against them, shaking the dust off your feet is no joke. Because when the Lord dusts off his feet, that's the clouds right there. Clouds and the storm and the whirlwind. Take a look at something here. So we'll start, we'll start off with this. Okay, the YMCA started promoting the abomination. Now because of censorship and things of that sort, I can't say certain words. So hopefully I can just leave them on the screen and you can put two and two together. So the YMCA push for the abomination <clears throat> was giving it out. You see here on the screen, you see a statement from the YMCA website. They believe uh, all communities uh, should have this abomination. They want to make it available through the YMCA's as a distribution site. So they push the mark, okay? The YMCA pushed the mark. Now let's see a little bit later what happened to them. What's been happening to some YMCA's here. Take a look at that. You can't even see the A in YMCA. The whole building got wiped out recently by a whirlwind. Judgment. There's another picture right there. Look at those cars flipped over. Whirlwind of the Lord came through. We we'll wiped them out. Done. There's another one. <clears throat> so, you get the picture. So, you might think, oh, just coincidence. But we're gonna go over plenty of examples. And by the end of this video, those that have eyes to see and ears to hear, they will see what's going on. And we also let the scripture talk. Let's, let the, let's see what the scripture, let's see what the word has to say about the subject. Isaiah 45 verse 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. So the Lord is doing all these things. This is what we call the other side of God. This is the side of God many people will see in these end days. And the book, as the book of Revelation is unfolding, they will see this side of God occur all throughout the earth. So don't forget, yes, Jesus came humble. 
but he's coming back in glory. He's coming back with a sword. He's coming back with a sword to smite the nations. The same Jesus that came and washed feet and laid down his life is the same one coming back for judgment. So what is calamity? You see right here a quick little visual of some calamities. Tornadoes is one of the main calamities that we're seeing all throughout the earth, especially in the U.S. So tornadoes is an example of a calamity. And you can see some other calamities on the screen as well. The definition of a, of a calamity. What does the scripture say? I, the Lord, make peace and create calamity. Here's another one. Amos 3 verse 6. If a trumpet is blown in the city, will not the people be afraid? If there is calamity in the city, will not the Lord have done it? So Isaiah and Amos, these prophets, they knew something about the Lord the rest of the people must not have seen. They must not have attributed the Lord to the calamity. But the prophets knew who caused the calamity. Let's look at the next thing now. We got United Methodist, Case United Methodist Church. You see uh, right there on the website, they say it shows where to find a church. Okay. And then you see the mission opportunity to spread the abomination, according to the website of the United Methodist Church. Here they are right here. Here's, here's the website. You see they have a mission to provide the mark to all the population. And they see it as an opportunity to put the abomination in people. Again, I have to use the word abomination because first of all, that is what it is. It is what we call the mark, what the scripture calls the mark, okay? But because of certain words, we have to go over some words on the screen and kind of skip over them and let you put two and two together. So here's that church. You see the pastor there having a welcome to our morning service, it says, as he teaches children and about three of them have their face, three or four of them have their face covered up as he has his face covered up. Okay, they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the midst of, in the garden behind one tree, eating uh, the abomination and the swine flesh will be destroyed, says the Lord. Now, I'm going to paraphrase that a little bit, but go look it up. It's in Isaiah 66. Here he is again. Here's another the other pastor. He's wearing his gloves. He's wearing his gloves. And I can't tell if he's got a brown cover on his face or not, but he's got his gloves on while he's on the podium having an outdoor service. The fearful and unbelieving shall be cast into the lake of fire. Here's the pastor again. I'm going with someone where this is. Bear with me as you look at these photos. That's him and his secretary or his wife, you know, on the pulpit, you know, covering their face. And uh, let's see what happens. So we already seen the United Methodists put push out, uh, push forward and came in agreement with the B system and push the mark. And you see here the article. His church got destroyed by a whirlwind, calamity, tornado. That right there, you see that photo on the screen? That's his house. So not only did his church get destroyed, this guy's house who lives next to the church got destroyed. Stood for the abomination, lived in fear, but without the fear of the Lord, men perish. That's the only fear that we should have. It's the fear of the Lord. The same Lord that created the bees and, and the butterflies and, and the trees and the waves and the dolphins is also the same Lord that created the calamities, the tornadoes, the tsunamis, the volcanoes erupting. The same God. You got to know what we call the other side of God. Not just the loving, gentle, merciful side. You have to see his power at hand. And he uses his creation to show many times his power. So, boom, you see what happened to the church. His church gets hit and his house gets hit. Now, let's see what the scripture says. Proverbs 15, 25. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud. But... He will establish the border of the widow. Praise God. That balances it out right there. You see right there that he will, he will take care of the widows. That he loves and he has mercy. Yes. 
But you see in the same sentence, he will destroy the house of the proud. And as you just seen right here, the picture of the house, the roof has been taken off. The house has been destroyed. Let's look at another uh, church here, Mayfield. Top website right there, what is that? United Methodist. Let's see what the pastor says of the Methodist church. Now this is a different church now, okay? Still United Methodist, but another uh, location. He sees that the man dates, I try to split up the word a little bit so the algorithm wouldn't catch me. He sees that the that pushing for the abomination and making it a law that people have to take this is a great thing. Go ahead and if you want to take pause, press a pause and read his words in the screen. He sees that Jesus would have done this as well. The false prophet will speak great blasphemies. Jesus would have never taken the abomination. Jesus would have never feared and hid behind some kind of face covering and took in, uh, uh, something that goes in his body that pollutes the temple. He wouldn't have done that. Don't you speak blasphemy against my Lord Jesus Christ. So let's see what happened to this man. There's his church right there. His church is done. The whirlwind of the Lord has come upon his church. His sanctuary. Judgment starts in the house of God. And sir, judgment has come to your house near you. There it is. First United Methodist Church in Mayfield. Destroyed. And you know, the odd thing is this guy gets up and he lives through it. Which is really the mercy of God. And what I mean by that is the fact that he's still alive is postponing where he's going for eternity. Because if he were to perish in that tornado... He'd be going to the lake of fire. He'd be going to hellfire. So the fact that he has another breath, you know, some may look at him and say, may he enjoy, enjoy his life while he's still here on this earth. For he already has taken the enemy's name into his bloodstream, into his body. And he's already bowed his knee to the beast. As you see him on the screen here with the mask on, you see that uh, it says his church was destroyed, yet he goes to another Methodist church to go preach. I don't know if you can even probably hear his sermon with his face covering. That's just besides the point. And you know, the odd thing is these quote unquote men of God and, and Christian organizations and all these things, why don't they turn to the Lord? Why don't they see the Lord's hand has come against them? They get back up in their pride and their arrogancy and they keep on preaching? First Peter 4 17 for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God here's another one church destroyed I'm just gonna start speeding up a little bit guys because there's there's many clips that I have here and many clips I could have added into here but for your the sake of your time you will get the point by the time we're done with this we don't have to go over a hundred examples you get the point but another church right here destroyed by a tornado there they go, try to clean up, pick it up, and rebuild it. Here it goes again. Another tornado, another Methodist church. Tornado wipes them out. It's all recent. This is all 2022, 2021. This is recent. This is after people have taken the abomination. Judgment. So they're thinking about rebuilding. You know, it reminds me of Amos. I encourage you to read Amos. Read chapter 4. And look at what happened. Now, I'm just going to pull it up in the NLT. Not that I'm a biggest, the biggest fan of NLT. I stick with pretty much King James. But just, just for time's sake, let's go ahead and read a couple verses in here. Because NLT is just a, you know, uh, a thought for thought for translation. It just helps you see in, in this specific chapter is what's going on. But you go ahead and parallel it with the KJV. That's totally fine. You see in Amos that the Lord is doing all these things to try to get people's attention. Let's look at a few things that the Lord is allowing and doing to try to get people to repent, but they still won't repent. And let's see what the Lord eventually says to them. He brought, we'll start with the first part. Verse six, he brings hunger and famine into the town. People don't repent, right? He kept the rain from falling when the crops needed it the most. People didn't repent. Their fields or gardens withered away while rain fell on some other fields, but their fields withered away. They, were, they, had, they had a need for water in verse eight. They couldn't find water. 
And at almost every single verse, what does it say? But still, you would not return to me. Look at verse 9. I struck your farms and your vineyards with blight and mildew. You know when a lot of times when hurricanes come, when floods come, when calamity comes, it leaves a mildew behind. Locusts devour all your fig and olive trees, but still you would not return to me, says the Lord. Sounds just like these people that have had their churches wiped out. They still don't even see the Lord's hand is against them. Imagine all the other signs the Lord has given them in their life and that they plugged their ears to. Verse 10, I sent plagues on you with the plagues that I sent on Egypt long ago. I killed your young men in war and led all your horses away. The scent of death filled the air, but still you would not return to me. We'll sum it up right here. I destroyed some of your cities as I destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Those of you who, who survived were like charged sticks pulled from a fire, but still you would not return to me. Last verse. Okay, let's get right to it. They didn't listen to the. They didn't listen to all the calamities. They didn't see the signs. They didn't return to the Lord. The Lord sums up like this: Prepare to meet your God in judgment. Took all that to try to wake you up. You still didn't repent. Prepare to meet your God in judgment. There's another one right here. We'll, we'll just kind of start speeding this up a little bit because you get the point. Another one just recently. Boom. This is. A, I think this was a Catholic church right here. Where you know that that Catholic church have a name and they live, but they're dead, according to the book of Revelation, right? There's churches that have the name of Jesus Christ in their church logo, in their, 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 their title, but they're dead inside. They make the outside of the cup look clean, but inside they're full of dead man's bones. And these bricks and these rocks, they fell down on this church. Go ahead and take a look at it right there. The man says, not only does he think it was a tornado, he thinks there's possibly more than one. That hit his building. Jeremiah 23, 29. Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? Sure is. Breaks a rock in pieces. Let's go over a few more examples here. Southern Baptist Theology Seminary, President Albert Moore. Oh. Let's see what he's got to say. He's got a big title there. He's the president. This man must know a lot, huh? You got suit and tie on. You see, he's the overseer of the, of the convention. Okay. He gives Christian the green light for the abomination. Okay. Well, you're not, I, I'm, I reject that in Jesus' name. I reject your green light. Let's see what happens. The BaptistNews.com sees that the abomination is a sign of God's grace. Wow. See what's going to happen in the Baptist industry, if you want to call it that. Call it an industry because it's like a corporation right about now. The Southern Baptist Convention organization. Did we just read about the Baptist Convention with that president? That sends thousands of missionaries overseas. <clears throat> Pronounced last week that it would require missionaries and their children, ages 16 and older, to take the abomination. So it's a must. It's a must. Here's another article about it. Los Angeles Times. The Southern Baptist Convention mandates it for all of its missionaries. More than 80 Southern Baptist churches in South Louisiana suffered structural damage in the hurricane. Calamity. More than 80 churches. Southern Baptists get hit. And look at this. This is on BaptistPress.com. This is on their own website. And they don't even attribute it to the Lord. And the Lord is against them. He's against their, their, their uh, declarations. He's against what they are promoting. 80 churches. Get hit. 
and they all happen to be Southern Baptists. Huh. You know, Louisiana's on that coast. Jeremiah 25, 32, thus says the Lord of hosts, behold, evil, calamity shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. A great whirlwind striking 80 Southern Baptist churches. Proverbs 10, 25, as the whirlwind passes, so is the wicked no more. But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. And last but not least, guys, I want to add something in. We started off by talking about how I was looking up, you know, drug dealers' homes destroyed by tornado. And don't don't think just because the churches are being dealt with, the Lord's not still dealing with the wicked in the world as well. When we pray they repent. Those that have not defiled the temple, those that are not reprobate, we pray they repent. Watch this right here. Cleanup underway at a medical marijuana farm. As you look into the story here, you'll see that almost all their crops, nearly 100% of their crops, were wiped out by a tornado. Their livelihood was destroyed in less than a minute. Their livelihood was destroyed in less than a minute. And I will come near to you to judgment. And I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against false swearers and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. The drugs, the Bible tells us that we shall be sober-minded. We should not fill ourselves with the smoke from marijuana. We don't bow our knees to bail with this unclean smoke. We have to be sober-minded. And judgment is starting to fall upon those too. Those that promote the sorcery they're starting to receive the judgment. As I told you from a local police officer here that said that this tornado jumped down on all the houses, all the drug dealers were, were falling down upon their houses. As we see here, it's going across the nation. So medical quote unquote marijuana. So pretty much legal drug dealers. But just because it's legal in the world does not mean it's legal and okay to the Lord. So they got hit with a tornado. They got destroyed. Jeremiah 23, 19. Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury. Even a grievous whirlwind, it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. So get ready guys, we just begun. Now we're gonna transition to another subject called Drop Dead Pastors. And unto the angel of the church of Sardis, write these things, says he that has the seven spirits of God, the seven stars, I know that works, thou has a name and thou liveth and are dead. So we're gonna see those that have a name, they call themselves preachers. Those that have a name, they call themselves messengers for the gospel. They call themselves prophets. But they're dead inside. They're taking the abomination of desolation and have been, le have been left desolate. And by the way, I want to make a quick disclaimer. I'm not saying this as rubbing in and rejoicing, okay? I, it's, not a, it's not a pleasing thing. I've had many family members, sadly, who have taken this. This is a hard thing. This is this is a it's been many times I've wept and cried tears over the people that have taken it and cried tears in hopes that people don't take it. Okay. So the reason I'm making this so is so you can see for your own eyes what is the fruits of what the seed they have put in them is. They have put the serpent seed in them, and let's see what the fruit is. Cause it's rotten fruit. It's dead fruit. So again, don't, don't think this message is some kind of callous message that we don't care about human beings. We do. We care about every single soul. We care about where everyone goes on eternity. But for some people, it is too late. And my hopes is, as, as I show you this video, this will increase 
your discernment and you will truly see what times we're in. And this truly is the mark. This truly is the abomination. So let's get into it. First guy we got right here, Thomas McKenzie. Priest, pastor, whatever he wants to call himself. He thinks that taking the abomination it means pro-life, as he tweeted in May 2021. May comes around, fast forward a few months to August. August 2021. He took the abomination. He's dead. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They have made it desolate, and being desolate, it mourneth unto me. The whole land is made desolate, because no man layeth it to heart. The spoilers are come upon all high places through the wilderness. For the sword of the Lord shall devour from the one end of the land even to the other end of the land. No flesh shall have peace. Hold not thy peace, O God of my praise, for the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are opened against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. Let his posterity be cut off, and in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. Next. This was a quote-unquote Christian entertainer slash musician. Okay? You can go ahead and zoom in, press pause. You can, you know, you can read his, uh, his prayer. He pretty much prays for the abomination to come heal the land. He's praying for the, the mark. Okay? And you see this. Uh, so he's hoping this comes to pass. He's praying for it. You see in January 2021, you see that he's urgently asking for prayer and he's uh, fighting for his life in the hospital at the end of January. And just a few weeks later, he's dead. Matthew chapter 23, verse 38. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Next church, full gospel church. That's what they call it, at least. They have a name that they live but they're dead. They call themselves the Full Gospel Church. They call it the largest Christian congregation in the world. As you see the statement right here from the church, they're only allowing people that have taken the abomination to enter into the chapel. Dead church. The pastor's name is David. You can look up on it right here. Devo Yango Chao, however you say his name. As you see right here, and also the next article, it's dead. 2021. Took the abomination, he's done. Drop dead pastors. As you see from the things I've shown you so far, the whirlwinds, the deaths of these pastors and these so-called men of God, all recent, all after, they had one thing in common. They took the abomination or promoted it themselves. Well, normally when they take it, they promote it themselves as well. But as you see, there's many more examples Many more examples, but just, again, just like I said in the, in the whirlwind part, just for your time's sake, I'm just going to use a good handful. And again, with those with eyes to see, they'll see. Those with ears to hear, they'll know what time we're in. But somebody that's stiff-necked stiff and hard-hardened, you can give them a hundred examples, and they still won't get through to them. They said we read in Amos, the Lord did all these things to get people's attention, but they still would not turn back to him. So I pray as many people that can turn back to the Lord will. Jesus name Matthew 24 15 when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place whosoever reads let him understand may you be those watching those that actually understand what time we're in next we have a event here you'll see in the details you can zoom in and, and check it out <clears throat> They have an event to get everyone to take the abomination. This this specific event was uh, to rebuild trust. And if you read it right here, it says why we need our black and brown community to be part of the abomination research. Sadly, a lot of these uh, elites, they are racist. And we rebuke racism in the name of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ died for all nationalities. Chinese, Jamaican, Haitian. American, Native Native Americans, you name it, his blood was shed for them. 
However, some of these elites don't feel that way, okay? They want to take people out. So you see right here, they had this, they had this event, third party event, blah, blah. You see the keynote speaker, his name probably has some kind of uh, algorithm attachment to it to make sure people don't speak too evil of this man, but his first name is Anthony. His last name starts with an F. You get the point. <laughs> so you see they have some moderators and then you see they have a panelist. Now let's just see who's on the panelist here. Okay, you got all bishops and reverends. And not only reverends, you got Reverend Doctor so-and-so. So they have Reverend Doctor Senior Pastor, Bauer G. Freeman. You know, sometimes I think, before I get into what happened with this man, I just want to say something. Sometimes I feel like people, when they introduce themselves with the word reverend, when they introduce themselves with the word doctor, reverend, or prophet, so-and-so, prophet, teacher, evangelist, some people, I believe, in their heart are using titles as a form of witchcraft, as a form of manipulation. Because if they have a title and someone believes it, they feel obligated to listen to that person that has a title. So there's many people I believe in pride they use a title of whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to call, whatever they want to call themselves, prophet or whatever. They use those titles to make you believe whatever they say. So watch out, watch out for those tactics. So anyhow, back to this Reverend right here you see on the screen. We'll go with the guy. What's one, two, three, third guy down? Reverend Doctor Bauer G. Freeman, senior pastor. Okay, and again, a, a Baptist church. We are we already learned about what, what the Baptist church is at right now. Great falling away. So he's with Dr. F. <laughs> Anthony F. He's with him. Working with him to uh get the abomination to people out there in the world and use manipulation on them, really, if you really think about it. It's manipulation. That's why that's why Anthony is getting all these quote unquote reverends and bishops to go out in the community and tell them. It's fine to the abomination. So Anthony F. is working with his panelists and his reverend to promote the abomination. Let's see what happened to this guy. There's a picture of him right there on the screen. Third guy down. Okay. Senior pastor of the Baptist church. Let's see what happened to him. It says right here, according to this article, the Baltimore Sun, the reverend, Dr. Bauer, Gates Freeman, what did he die from? You see right there, he died, right? Blood clot. Promoted the abomination, took the abomination, gave it to the people. Worked with Anthony F. And he's dead. Drop dead pastors. You see right here, some more articles of sadly his family mourning, the passing of him. And I pray as many people in his family has not taken it, do not listen to his vice and do not take it. And that those in his family that can get saved would get saved in Jesus' name. Next, here's a man with a big name. Here's a man right here that has a name. He says he lives, but he's dead inside, desolate. His name is Franklin Graham. He promoted the abomination heavenly. He said that he had faith in it. He said that Jesus himself would get this abomination. And we reject those words in Jesus' name. The false prophet, what we say earlier, will speak great blasphemies. It's just like this man. The body of the false prophet is, is, is speaking great blasphemies right now across the world. So anyhow, he says he would take it, right? He goes and takes the abomination. Let's see what it says. After he takes the abomination, according to usnews.com, in recent months, Franklin, you know who? Franklin Graham, Billy Graham's son, had developed constrictive pericarditis, inflammation, hardening of the sac around the heart, hardening of the sac around the heart in recent months. He took the abomination and his heart was hardened. You know why his physical heart was hardened? Because before he even took the abomination and the physical heart got hardened, spiritually his heart was hardened towards the Lord. So he has open heart surgery. You can, you can learn more about it, do some research. Open heart surgery. He's alive right now, but he had him had emergency surgery. Go ahead, do some research about it. I only got a few clips in here for time's sake, but you'll see. Now he didn't die. 
in in the natural realm, but spiritually he has. And by the fact that he still has more time on this earth, he's just postponing him for where he's going for eternity. And I know this is very hard to hear when you hear this type of stuff, but this is the truth. I'm not trying to be callous and, and, and rude, okay? This is the blunt truth. We can't we can't always sugarcoat everything. Sometimes the reality, the truth, the Bible says, I think it's Ecclesiastes, that with an increase of knowledge comes an increase of sorrows. So these are these. These are an increase of sorrows. We're not rejoicing in the fact that these people are going to the pit. Our hope is to show you what's happening in hopes that you don't ever go to the pit. And you can cry out for as many people that are left. 70% of America, and probably even more now, has bowed their knee to the beast. Or reach out to those 30% that are left. Say, wake up and rise for Jesus Christ. And those that are asleep but haven't taken the abomination, we're calling out to you, too, to awake from the dead. Awake from the sleep. Awake from the slumber. And rise to the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Next. Another pastor. I know people, we can talk about what should females be pastors and whatnot. We'll save that video for another subject. For another, We'll save that subject for another video. Okay? Over here, 44 years old. She promoted... The abomination for TV. Okay. She's a pastor. She worked with um, the TV stations to promote the abomination. Two months later, after she took it, she's dead. Drop dead pastors. Here, I'll, I'll just skip through a few more. Here's a priest, volunteer for it, took it, dead. Another man right here. He said, uh, if God told him to take the abomination, he'd take it a hundred times. Then you read down here. You know, him, his family take, end up taking it, his children. Just go ahead and read the article. So it's in Nigeria. They're promoting it down there. A lot of ministries are promoting it down there. So anyhow, this man takes it, as you see, with his uh, face shield on his face. His family takes it. His son also is a pastor who took it. And his son is now dead. This is sad because he, le he left children behind as well. And Lord, pray for his children that they don't ever take it in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray they haven't taken it yet, Lord. If it's not too late. So, another pastor. Done. Again, all 2021, 2022. Happening right now. Pastor slumps, dies, dies Why ministering. He was in the midst of ministering when he died. And we're going to see some videos here in a second. Of people literally preaching and dropping after took the abomination. There's another one right here. Pastor. From what church? Fortmore Holiness Christian Church. He slumped and collapsed during his sermon. Look at that right there. What's that YouTube channel you see on the screen? Fortmore Holiness Church. Who are they working with? Fortmore Holiness Church working with the private sector abomination initiative. So they joined up, took the shot, passed a collapse while giving a sermon. Another one right here. I saw a clip from this church right here on Facebook of them taking the shot. And let's take, let's take a look at what happened to this pastor. All right, actually, I think he calls himself a deacon. I was telling people a few weeks ago on a Wednesday, a Wednesday night call that they're going to start seeing this more often. So you're starting to see it unfold now. And I'm sure it's happening. I'm sure it's happening in many areas off camera as well. Not everyone's recording every sermon. And this is just what's been reported to the news and what's reported online. Let alone all those things that are not reported. Many things don't hit the news. Next one right here. As you see, they all are wearing the um, face covering. You know, I would sit here and say why they were in a face covering after they already took the abomination, but I'm not trying to rub it in anymore. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make it. It doesn't make wisdom to me if they wear the face covering after they took the abomination. But you know, they have the spirit of fear inside of them. There's another one right here. So this guy's at the uh, Mecca Church. He dies at uh, 58 years old. We see that right here. The uh, that Mecca where, where that church is at 
has a this is back in 2021. 94% of the residents, 12 and older, took the abomination. That's that's back in 2021. I can't imagine where is that now in 2022. The sanctuary of Our Lady Guadalupe and Mecca has lost two priests in a little over a year. Two priests in a year. Another one right here. Another another man collapse. A bishop. So-called bishop collapses. Here's another man, bigger name, T.D. Joshua. He endorses the abomination. He urges all Nigerians to take it. That was in January 2021. And we see in June 2021, he's dead. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. It's a little overwhelming. I feel like a book exploded in my face. <laughs> Don't tell my laugh that time. Oh, I'm funny too. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Did you get... You got... Right? I did. I just got my second shot. Great. And uh, just right after I got it, maybe an hour, I started nauseated. I was feeling sick. I oh. called the doctor. I go, can it happen that fast? I went to the pharmacy the other day. I got a, a, a booster shot, and uh, I, I should have gotten it in my arm, but I got it in my butt, so I'm a little pain. I'm a little pain. I don't mean to brag. I don't care, but I want you to know, double booster flu shot, and I'm going to be honest, I have the shingle shot, too. And I still get my period. What? Yes. Traveled, went to Mexico twice, did shows, meet and greets, never got COVID. Clearly, Jesus loves me the most. Seriously. So nice. So nice. Honestly, that's all I remember. So weird. And then when I woke up, it was out of that movie scene where- Heather? Yes, Heather, it really Heather. was. It was like yeah. four or five faces yeah. around me. One woman with short hair, another woman with long hair. One was a doctor, one was a nurse. Yes. They were juicy scoopers. Shout out to them, they were amazing. They, they were like right away, like Heather, yes. I'm a doctor, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, this is not happening. Yeah. I was just all like, this is not happening. This is a dream. I dream really vividly. And in my dreams, when a dream is really bad, mm -hmm. I will say, this is a dream. And some people in the dream will go, no, it's not, Heather. And I'll go, <laughs> yes. And I'll go, this is a dream. 
wake up and I can wake myself up. Oh wow. So I literally like the a few times really bad things have happened. Oh, you I'm know, in, in the my nightmare. life I've been like is this a dream and I'm like hitting myself like this is so bad because Annie reminded me that I have like stand up stress dreams. The road ahead is so cold you sure you want to take this walk with me. Speak the truth so many friends and even family that's when you'll find out everything in this world is truly vanity somebody pinch me and tell me this has all been a dream I try to wake up The great falling away, folks. So I pray that everyone has watched this video and got this far. I pray you stay right with Jesus Christ. Those who are right with Jesus Christ, stay right with him. Those that serve him, stay serving him. And those that don't know him, those that are not right with him and that can repent, I pray to God you repent today. I pray to God the fear of the Lord will grip you and would turn you from sin to your Savior, Jesus Christ. That you would leave the sin behind and come to the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ and that you would hang on to his garment and receive that love, receive that mercy, receive that forgiveness before you see the utter wrath of God pour upon this earth. I plead with your soul right now in Jesus' name to get right. John 17, 3. This is eternal life that you would know thee, the only true God, the one that he and the one that he has sent, Jesus Christ. You have to know God. Without knowing God, nothing else matters. The money doesn't matter. The, 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 the cars, the clothes, the fashion, the glam of this world, the, the, the wealth, nothing matters. If you don't know God, if you don't know the eternal life himself. You do not want to end up like these men that are taking the abomination and they're going to the pit. It's time to repent today. It's time to cry out with tears today and say, God, have mercy on my soul. I need you. I want to know you. I'm tired of being lukewarm. I'm tired of backsliding. Repent. While the window of mercy is still open, fear God. Love God. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. If you're feeling dirty, if you feel like you're full of sin, and you're still savable, you run to that spiritual shower. You run to Jesus Christ to be washed in his blood. He shed his blood for you. He has not forgotten about you, but have you forgotten about him? cry out to Jesus Christ today. I plead with your soul. And those soldiers worldwide that are on fire for Jesus, those that are in the fight, I pray you stay in the fight. I pray the enemy never takes you out of the Lord's hands. That you would not walk out of the Lord's hands. That you would stand firm in the gospel. Because persecution will increase. The Bible says what about the end days? When they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction should come upon them as a woman in travail and a woman in birth pains. And what happens when birth pains occur? They tighten up and they loosen for a period of time. They tighten up and they loosen and they get more and more intense. So believe the tightening is coming again. Don't be rocked to sleep because of the loosening that's happened. Because you might not live in a country where things have loosened up. You might live in a country who's already going through the next birth pains. Look at China. Look at them locking it down. People are starving out there. 
How much do we need Jesus Christ in this last hour? Jesus, we need you! Cry out to him today. Get connected with a real ministry. Get connected with real believers that love Jesus Christ. Pray for the lukewarm that they'll repent because you need to do not forsake the assembly in this last hour. If you have a chance to meet with fellow believers, meet with them, worship with them, praise with them because this life is perishing. A beautiful property, beautiful land, a beautiful home, all the cars, money, and clothes can be gone in one whirlwind. Don't fear the whirlwind. Don't fear the creation. Fear God Almighty. He is the creator of all things. Worthy to be worshipped. Worthy to bow down before. And say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Rise up, army of God. The end days have begun. Judgment has begun. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Amen.